Uh, joining us this morning, our friends from uh, Titusville City Hall. We've got the city manager, Neil Freitas, joining us, and uh, junior council member, Gavin Griffin. Hi, Gavin. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, guys. Good, good morning, Luke. You. Happy Monday. Great uh, to see you. Yeah, good to see you guys. Well, busy weekend. Uh, clean up and clean up and clean up. What else yeah. has been going on? <laughs> well, we had some great weather uh, for clean up on Saturday. Uh, quite a few folks, Gavin and myself, were there. And I think we spent about four or five hours cleaning up around Shiny Park and down through, you know, the business district. And um, from sweeping the sidewalks to picking up sticks to mm. picking up garbage. Uh, things like that, and uh, it was a great turnout with a lot of volunteers that were there. The Moose Club was there, serving brought some uh, food, brought some food, hot dogs and chips, and uh, it was just great. We all we all got to hang out and clean up at the same time, so it was great. Nice, uh, makes a difference, doesn't it, Neil? It sure does. It does, and of course, then we have all this heavy rain last <laughs> night, and I see some of the sidewalks that we swept, Gavin, oh, are yeah. covered with stuff again. On but my way in this morning, it. I was looking at some of them. It's like, well, I just cleaned that on Saturday <laughs> morning, but no, yeah. it's. You know the weeds getting pulled some of the weeds and and some of the garbage stuff you know things that came up uh, once the snow melted it was it was great to as i said to get everybody together and clean up downtown hard to believe uh, about a month from now there'll be concerts in the park and yes see a lot of people out and about again and that's that's nice uh gavin for you um on, on a serious note do you take notes of that kind of stuff now uh, that you're involved with council do you as you're passing a situation or <laughs> Uh, I mean, do people approach you at the, at the store now and do you take notes and bring that back to council? Yeah, I get a lot of people um, just day to day, whether I'm going to get a cup of coffee or at the store or I run into somebody that I know that says, you know, I'd like to see this thing or this thing. Um, and a lot of it is students as well. Um, we have an input group that we meet Mondays before the council meetings to kind of get an idea of what young people are looking for uh, in Titusville. So I, you know, take all of that into consideration and take it to council uh, every, twice every month. Yeah. Neil, what's that input been like? It's been great. I've, I've had an opportunity to go to the school and, with Gavin and, and the kids that, that, that gather. In fact, I'm hoping to go today. And uh, it's just great to hear, you know, youth input, uh, to see them interested in hearing what's going on in the city and to find out, hey, uh, how does this work? And uh, here's some ideas. We'd like to see this in town. And uh, so, no, it's great to have them involved. and. Um, you know, it's, it's been wonderful having some youth at the council meetings to uh, provide input and share ideas as well. So, And it's not just Gavin. Who else is part of that? Uh, Kat Henderson. Yep. Yep. So uh, she and I are the two junior members of council. Um, she's a junior at the high school and I'm a senior. And uh, so we kind of work together on doing, you know, our meetings and, um, and then, of course, going to council. So. Yeah. And, and that's kind of nice, Neil, right? Because the, the idea here is that Kat will step up in that... Yes. Uh, role next year uh, or continue in that role but mm -hmm. as a senior and you bring somebody in uh, that's new that's new yeah and, and you absolutely. just kind of keep that cycle going so that's uh, very well done so yes. uh, Gavin are you enjoying that uh, yeah I mean I, I love it uh, you know I've been to tons of meetings um, for different things trying to get an idea of what's going on in the city and um, maybe ways that we can get young people more involved to help uh, solve some of the problems that we're that we're facing. Yeah. In fact, uh, you got to uh, sort of serve in the official capacity, right, uh, last week at mm -hmm. the Arbor Day activities. Yes. Yeah, so uh, the mayor couldn't be there and, and Neil mm -hmm. couldn't be there. So uh, I went and read the proclamation and uh, did some of the activities with the students that were there in the park for Arbor Day. Yeah. How was that? It, it was fantastic. It was a little cold, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it was good to get out and see everybody um, enjoying the sunshine, at least, and, and learning a little something for, for Arbor Day. Very nice. You know, what, what's that like to, to look at uh, the youth here and say, you know what, I trust them to, to pull off a responsibility like that? Absolutely. You know, that's why we started this program, to get the youth involved, obviously, in the school as well. And, uh, no, it's great. I had no, uh, to me, no hesitation that Gavin wasn't going to do a great job and re well represent the city, and um, it was great that he was able to do that. What's that say for you guys, though, to, to not only because how many times uh, will somebody say, hey, we're going to implement this program, but it's really just kind of, you know, we'll just let them kind of tag along where you guys have said, no, no, they're actually part of us. We're going to use them. Yeah, no, it's been great. We've, you know, work hand in hand with them. And again, it's it's. Uh it's great. It's nice for me to be able to go to a meeting at the school and Gavin leads the meeting. I can just sit back and watch. You know, we've kind of reversed roles. And, uh, you know, and on the other end of it, uh, Gavin gets a chance to see all the meetings that I have to, to uh, um, be a part of each week, whether it's a, 
you know, a committee meeting, uh, whether it's mm -hmm. something we've uh, just started up and uh, he gets to see more than just those two council meetings a month. And I think a lot of folks don't realize that there's more to city government than just two meetings a month. And, and uh, there's a lot involved behind the scenes that, that go along with that. And uh, again, it's great to have uh, the younger folks be a part of that as well. Is it a night and day difference between uh, what students uh, have as, as priorities to what uh, the, the older population has? Um, it, there's a lot in common, okay. uh, but I find that with younger people, they focus less on, you know, the oil and the, and the history of it, and they want to see what can we do going forward. So uh, fishing, biking, hiking, stuff like that, um, and also businesses. Um, what was I saying? The, the Merc mm -hmm. has been fantastic for young people because mm -hmm. when you need somewhere to go get a cup of coffee and study in the afternoon, there it is, you know. So things like that where um, there's a little crossover, but there's definitely – um, some fresh ideas coming in from younger people. You know, we talk a lot about this. Uh, obviously, over the last couple of years, uh, the pandemic has really changed a lot of things. Um, but uh, during a period where you think nothing really is going to happen because, you know, money will probably be tight or people are going to be worried about their finances. Instead, you're finding people are stepping up and taking risks and opening businesses. Have you had a chance to talk to any of these folks and what inspired them to say, now's the time to open a business? Uh, you know, a few. It is. It's, it's uh, crazy because the last few years, it's been people have been kind of stuck inside their homes, not being able to go out. Businesses have shut down around us. Uh, fortunately for Titusville, we've been very lucky. We have businesses coming in, uh, projects that we've been working on, uh, you know, may have been delayed uh, uh, somewhat, but we've still been able to move forward with a lot of other things. And, um, you know, some of the businesses talk about, you know, coming to town. It's been exciting. I was, I was shocked, uh, excited at the same time, because a lot of times we're, we're thinking, how can we, how can we uh, get folks to come to town and, and um, occupy these, these buildings, these commercial buildings that we have that are empty. And, uh, you know, we have a group of us that are, are meeting and we're trying to figure out ways to showcase a lot of these empty buildings in town and, and get and attract people to come to Titusville. So to have them do that, I really haven't had an opportunity to sit down and say, you know, why are you coming to Titusville? I do know uh, the real estate market has been, you know, you'll see a house go up for sale in the next week. It says sale pending, and, yeah. which is amazing, and it still seems yeah. to be that way. So um, it is exciting. Uh, some folks that, that are new to town that I do talk to say uh, it's just they want to come to a smaller town. They're from a bigger city, and, and uh, some of them can work, work remotely from home. Um, and, again, they wanted, they wanted a smaller town atmosphere, and uh, they picked Titusville, which is great. And, again, we were very lucky. Folks paid their taxes during the pandemic, and uh, thankfully we didn't have any businesses that, that shut down. Um, you know, compared to other places, uh, we did have some that decided to sell, but it seems that they're going to be, you know, somebody's going to pick them up. So, uh, uh, again, we're very lucky and, and I'm very happy that uh, we're able to continue to, to, to do things we want to do. And not to pick on uh, Corey, but uh, Corey's somebody who moved back to the, mm -hmm. the area. And, uh, Corey, I think you were saying, too, that you've noticed this vibe yeah. that's been contagious. Yeah, absolutely. I've noticed... The fact that uh, downtown's a lot more alert during the week, or um, like on the weekends when you're walking around, there's a lot of people in the business district. Mm -hmm. uh, I notice other people like myself that have moved back and that want to give back to the community that gave so much to them. So I think there's a lot of that going on. Um, Gavin, I wanted to ask you, if you were to talk to somebody in ninth or 10th grade right now at the high school, what would you do? Would you give them what advice would you give them to do what you're doing as a junior uh, city council member? Well, uh, I would first off tell them to do it 100% uh, because you a learn a lot and b do a lot. So um, if you're looking for some way that you can impact uh, the community, better the community, I think it's a wonderful way to do it. And of course, you get to know a lot of people. Um, you get to meet a lot of people and work together to uh, solve some of the problems that we have. Yeah. Neil, uh, same advice you'd give to this, an adult running. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, me and Gavin talk a lot about it would be great if we could throughout the school year provide tours to, this, to the, uh, the kids at school so they can see our facilities. Uh, obviously, people know, well, the fire department has your fire trucks and the police department has your police cars. But to be able to go up there and go through there and just – have the, the workers explain, this is what we do, this is how we get ready for a fire call, this is, this is how uh, some of the document and paperwork that we have to put through, you know, uh, in the police department. And to be able to see our, our water and sewer plant, a lot of folks just think you flush your toilet and the water goes away and you get fresh water. Uh, but there's, uh, Gavin's been able to, to take part in tour, to actually see how the process works, and it's really amazing. And I think that would be an eye-opener to a lot of the kids mm -hmm. to be able to say, 
wow, there's more, you know, it's not just a simple process sometimes. And, uh, you know, maybe it attracts some of those kids to say, I'd like to stay in town. Maybe there'll be an opening in the city, whether it's, uh, you know, law enforcement, fire, or, uh, you know, public works. But that applied to folks who were on city council. When you did that tour, yes. that was really, for some of them, the first time they got to experience all of that, right? And yes. that helps make better decisions down the Absolutely. road when they go, oh, I, now I understand how that works absolutely when we sit down at budget time at the end of the year and a department head you know speaks to council and says you know this is what we need this is what we need in the future <laughs> council can relate and say oh yeah i remember how that process works and you're, you're right so uh, it's great to have council that are very much uh, proactive and and knowing what our city employees do and and then when like, again come down to uh, budget time they understand when we're asking for things and this is why so you're watching the morning drill on stream television and on Armstrong's neighborhood channel and listening to it on the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. Friends from uh, Titusville uh, City Hall here with us uh, this morning. Neil Freitas, Gavin Griffin uh, with us here this morning. And, uh, you know, Neil, uh, going forward, we're into May. I, and I think you go back to November, December. I know you were working on budgets, but it was always the thought of, okay, what, you know, getting ready for the spring and summer. And we're on the doorstep now. Uh, does that mean the heart's pounding to get things ready to go, or are you pretty much in place to, to move into the summer? Uh, both. Uh, we're ready to, ready to go. Looking for, we're always looking forward for, um, uh, you know, to get through springtime and, and summertime. We have a lot of projects this year. Uh, I just, a lot of times I'm talking with my wife and relating, gosh, we have so many wonderful things going on. We have, uh, uh, let's say it's wonderful, but we have the South Perry Street Bridge that's going to be removed. Uh, they, are, they are getting closer and closer to, for that to happen um, with putting utility pool in place. And they ran some wires last week, so we're very nice. excited. And uh, we had the OCNT on last week, uh, Corey. And, you know, that, yeah. was, that was also, you know, brought up just getting mm -hmm. that, that space cleaned up because exactly. just the number of visitors are, that are coming in, especially yeah. this summer after being, you know, uh, only having a certain amount of people ride the train last year. Um, this is going to be a big season. It, it is. And, uh, you know, driving down through there and you round that corner, it's just such an eyesore. It's been that way for years. And, and um, it's just just to be able to move forward in the next step to get that bridge removed and see some work being done down there. And then council can sit down and decide, hey, you know, what do we want to do? Do we want a, a walking bridge? Do we want a covered bridge? You know, what what's the next step? But just to see some some progress down there would be great. And you know, Is there less government influence when it comes to, like, a mm -hmm. walking bridge? Um, or do you still have to do the muscle study and all still of that? Still have to stuff? go through, depending okay. on if we use funding, uh, you know, in, in that aspect. There needs to be an environmental study done that's done. And, uh, you know, so you're working with those folks from the state. Um, obviously, the county owns South Perry Street Bridge, so we need to work with those folks as well. And so it's not always a simple uh, yeah. process, but. Um, I miss days when you could say, you know what, we need a bridge there. Let's just put a bridge there. <laughs> there I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. They're I'm long you. gone. Yeah. <laughs> So we do. We have a lot of exciting projects. The Diamond Street project we're working on, that'll be uh, shovel-ready here at the end of June. Uh, so we're working on a final implementation of that park. Uh, that's going to be a great, uh, uh, a great addition to downtown. Uh, we have some other funding uh, things that we've applied for. Um, City Hall renovation on the outside. We're hoping we get that this year. Fleming Park renovation, Admire Complex renovation. Um, Gosh, it just the list goes on and on. Not from from not only big projects, but the smaller ones. Born Learning Trail, we're going to uh, implement into Roberts Grove and the Burgess Park as well. Uh, the community garden, which the city uh, finished up their portion of last week, so that'll be you'll see some uh, some raised beds going in there, six to eight raised beds and a fence with a gate. Uh, that'll be ready by Memorial Day. Uh, so it's just you know, next thing you know, we'll have Oil Fest. So Ooh. we're uh, we're very excited with what's going on in the city. No, it sounds like it's going to be a pretty busy summer from the city perspective. Uh, from, you know, the, the homeowner that's <coughs> trying to spruce up their homes. Mm -hmm. A lot of people the last year or two put a lot of money into their homes, right? They didn't go anywhere. It's yeah. like time to tackle some of these projects. Uh, things you hear about, you know, sidewalks, fences, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, things like that. Um, are people looking for resources, do you think, uh, in terms of help for those types of projects? Um, or or help, and I know we, we tackled this last week a little bit, but um, just finding you know the right person to, to do the work. Uh, what sort of resources are available through the city? Yeah, so you know a lot of the, a lot of projects the city's been a part of the community garden. You know we helped out with that with with some of the uh, man hours. You know some of the labor that was involved. Uh, again, uh, I've always stressed that the city is always willing to work with 
anyone to help them out, uh, to give them some guidance, if maybe not uh, with our hands, but we certainly can help make phone calls and we can certainly put you in the right direction if you're looking for some funding. Uh, we have a business owner in town that uh, has taken over conservatorship of a commercial building that's been condemned on Diamond Street. Uh, I've been able to work with this business owner in the county as well, and, and we're, we found a funding source possibly that may be able to help. Nice. Uh, it's a very expensive project to get the building up to, up to code. Um, and obviously the supply chain issue that we have going on, contractor issue as well with trying to get folks. Uh, we, we've, uh, the city's been uh, somewhat concerned with uh, having a, putting out to bid the Diamond Park. Uh, what's cost going to be? We actually have on our agenda this week where we're, we're over budget on that park. Uh, we don't have a lot uh, in, uh, to put implement into that park, but the cost of things are just uh, uh, crazy. And, uh, you know, so there's some nervousness of are we going to be able to get a contractor. We have a time frame on the funding that we have to have that park done this year. So we're, we're uh, you know, doing the best we can. But again, uh, I always encourage folks if you're uh, looking for a contractor to uh, help with the sidewalk. Uh, you just can't find anybody. Give us a call. Our code enforcement officer as well uh, obviously deals with building permits and new construction and uh, can certainly put you in the right direction or give you some guidance on uh, if you need a permit or, hey, no, you don't. Um, always encouraging homeowners and business owners to uh, uh, improve their, you know, their buildings or, or what have you. So, uh, again, uh, the city's here for an extra resource. Uh, two questions along the, that line. Uh, one is, uh, I would imagine it's also difficult for you to get things uh, scheduled because you know all these contractors are are trying to get whatever jobs they can get in and finish up, and you, you know you're still pricing with with materials that's still up in the air with with things. So I'm sure that's complicated. And yeah. the sooner you can get somebody scheduled for a project, the better it's going to be. Um, uh, but along those lines, how many people are also um, trying to do the right thing when it comes to their home or especially if they have a historic property, yeah. uh, maybe a, a, a building in town or, or a home that they want to make sure that things are uh, historically accurate? Yes. So obviously they can contact City Hall or Planning Commission as well. Uh, Rhonda Clark does a fantastic job, uh, you know, with the, 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 the entire Planning Commission does. Uh, but, you know, if you have questions on, hey, can I, can I put this kind of siding on my house? Hey, but I live here. Uh, there's some guidelines, you know, you, you have to follow. And um, certainly if they need some recommendations or some ideas, uh, the Planning Commission is there. City Hall, as I said, is there as well. And, and, and again, uh, Skip Welling, our code enforcement officer, zoning officer, can answer some questions. If he doesn't have the answer, he'll get you an answer. And um, so those are things we just encourage folks to call if you have a question. Uh, drive through recycling collection taking place on the 5th, no, 14th, 14th, Saturday. Yes, that'll be uh, in Burgess Park on the far lot. Uh, we had, I think last year was our first year having it over in that area. It was just, uh, it worked out better than City Hall parking lot because of uh, Franklin Street and the, the line of traffic that uh, boggled down Franklin Street. So uh, we thought that was a great idea to have it over there. Lots of room. Uh, you kind of meander through uh, Burgess Park and, and there'll be some dumpsters there and, and some drop-offs. If you have any questions or concerns, uh, can, can I drop this off? Can I not drop this off? How many? Uh, call City Hall. Uh, we'll let you know, and and uh, again, it's hard to believe we're at that time of year again already for that. Yeah, event. crazy. Uh, Gavin, uh, your time is kind of winding down a little bit, right? You're going to be yeah. off to school in the fall. Uh, yeah. What are things you want to tackle or bring up before uh, wrapping things up? Well, um, I talked with Neil the other day about a project that I'm working on right now, uh, finding businesses in the area that will be hiring um, for students that want a summer job. Uh, so that's something that I really wanted to find because I know a lot of people, even Hudson, mm -hmm. was saying that uh, it's tough to find somewhere to work um, because maybe you're just not seeing it uh, as much driving through town. But when you have a list that you can go down and say, here are all the places you could work, take your pick and uh, go ahead and call and you know apply or whatever it is, um, I think it would be great not only for students, um, but also for the businesses. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're working on that right now? Uh, yep, that's something I, I just started last week, uh, looking into businesses that are hiring and putting together a, a list. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a wonderful idea. Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, kids looking for something to do this summer, obviously mm -hmm. to make some money, and, and uh, mm -hmm. obviously the business owners, I'm sure, could use help as well. Yeah, that's great. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah. Good job. Neil, for you, what, uh, what sort of things are you working on uh, this week or this month? Uh, we have council meeting tomorrow. Uh, sh not a whole lot on the agenda. Again, uh, we are going to talk a little bit about the Diamond Park. We have a business spotlight as well, something that we do twice a month, which is which is wonderful. Um, other than that, we may have an, a special event on there as well. It seems like we have those every uh, yeah, it's good. Every meeting, so which is great. And that's just something that's happening in Titusville. So, nope, we got some uh, projects, little small projects we're working on as well, and and uh, we'll keep moving forward. 
Neil, Gavin, good to see you this morning. Thanks for your time. Luke, have a good week. You too. Take care. Thanks.